What is up guys, it's Solheim here, back with another Wrath of the Lich King classic video. So today we are continuing our Professions gold making series, which is a mini-series that I'm currently doing on this channel, going over every single profession to uncover their true gold making potential, and my goal with these videos is to show you how to make gold with each profession. Today we are talking about enchanting, so without further ado, let's commence the enchanting gold making guide. Enchanting is actually quite an incredibly profession in Classic WoW in general, with a lot of gold making potential, and there's a recently uncovered change coming in Wrath Classic that will greatly increase the profitability of enchanting overall, and thus making it a much better profession for gold making than it otherwise would have been, and even without that change, it would have been a really decent profession for making gold. So enchanting, it is quite simple really, you enchant things, yeah, that is, that's it, video over. No, but really, you, you enchant things. That being said though, you also need recipes or formulas, and the more recipes you have access to, the more profit you will make. In Wrath, you will acquire most of your recipes or formulas, once again, from your trainer and a specific enchanting vendor, and the enchanting vendor will teach you four different recipes at the cost of dream shards, ranging from four dream shards to ten dream shards per formula, so acquiring all of them would actually be quite expensive. You also have formulas such as the Blade Warding Weapon Enchant, which is a raid drop. It is also worth mentioning that the types of formulas you want to obtain are not only the ones that are native to Northrend, old world formulas are also incredibly relevant due to Twink reasons, as well as Heirlooms. Heirlooms is an addition coming in Wrath that will allow you to send bound on account items to an alternative character that you want to level up, and these will scale up with you as you level, and many people choose to enchant these heirlooms with as strong enchants as possible to boost their own leveling experience and leveling speed. Some specific enchants you might want to be looking at for this specific purpose is the Crusader enchant, Fiery weapon enchant, Agility enchant for weapons, Spell power weapon enchant, and the chest enchants as well, usually the one for stats or plus 100 health. In Wrath of the Lich King, we also get access to something called Volumes, which allows you to put your enchants onto an enchanting volume and sell that enchanting volume as a scroll on the auction house, directly allowing you to auction your enchants so you don't have to sit in your major city and link your enchanting all day. This introduces a brand new gameplay for enchanters when it comes to gold making, and if you want to maximize your profits, the usual route is like this. Obtain as many formulas as possible, get the most difficult ones lock, uh, to obtain locked behind reputation or low drop rates, and once you have as many different formulas as possible, enchant one to two of each onto a scroll and put those scrolls on the auction house. From here, it is all up to you how you want to play it. You can actively cancel scan your auctions, which will allow you to always be on the top of the auction house, but also requires more active market watching on your part, or you can log in and check your auctions once or twice a day, which is usually what I do. So let's talk about what's changing in Wrath Classic. In original Wrath we had a dis disenchant button, which was added to the group system while doing dungeons, so as long as one person in the group had enchanting, anyone in the group could vote to disenchant an item, and whoever wins the roll would get the enchanting materials, directly allowing you to disenchant even if you don't have enchanting. This lowered the price of enchanting materials in Wrath by quite a lot, as the supply also increased by quite a lot, but in Wrath Classic, this disenchant roll function will not be available. This means that enchanting materials could be quite scarce, and as you need dream shards to buy your enchanting formulas, there is a lot of gold to be made simply because of the constant demand. The removal of the disenchant button also brings with it more profitability by utilizing item shuffles like the Serenite Shuffle, which I cover more in depth in my gold guide, and I have also covered in previous videos. So uh, before, so I'm not going to repeat that one right now, but there's a lot of potential shuffles available, especially with the removal of the disenchant roll button. Speaking of my gold guide though, you can check that out through the link in the video description, and by using the code SOLHEIM, you can also get it for 50% off, and this is a gold guide that I've made specifically for Wrath Classic, containing all of my gold making secrets for Wrath, 
including vendor shuffles, item shuffles, how to make gold with professions, the best wrath gold farms, investments, and a whole lot more. It is basically everything I know about gold making, all put into one document. So yeah, if you're looking for even more gold making information, once again, the link to my guide is down below. Now, who should have enchanting, or could use enchanting to make more gold? Well, pretty much anyone, as you can disenchant all the gear when it's uh, once it's replaced, but I want to highlight two types of players. First up, the casual raiders who don't want to min-max everything by min-maxing their professions for performance. We all know that jewel crafting, engineering and blacksmithing are usually the best professions for most classes when it comes to raiding and arguably tailoring for casters. That being said though, if you're raiding on a casual level and just want to have some fun and want to make some semi-passive gold, you can obtain some incredibly easy abyss crystals which are used in high-end enchants and you will obtain these abyss crystals every time that you replace old equipment with new raid items. Over the expansion's lifetime, this will equal to several thousands of gold only from disenchanting your old gear and selling those crystals. Next up, or the next person who should definitely look into enchanting, is the Paladin or Mage booster. Paladins and Mages are able to sell boosts and farm dungeons for raw gold, and enchanting is not just something you bring to make more profit, but also reduce downtime. By disenchanting greens and blues, you can save more bank space, and instead of going to the vendor every single dungeon reset, you can go to the to the vendor after every 3 to 5 dungeon resets instead, maximizing your actual farming uptime, and in many scenarios, the enchanting materials are also worth more than the vendor value of those greens and blues as well. And if either of these classes are able to solo wrath dungeons at high capacity, including bosses, they could be in for some insane amounts of gold by utilizing uh, enchanting to farm up insane amounts of dream shards, cosmic, greater cosmic essences, and infinite dust. It is also proven that paladins can solo the first level of the oculus, which is an insane skinning gold farm, and by utilizing the enchanting on top of skinning, you can also disenchant any greens you find while farming, increasing the profitability of that farm. So, while enchanting is actually quite simple on paper, it actually has a lot of different methods of which you can make gold. You can make semi-passive gold from disenchanting raid gear once you replace it, you can farm for greens and blues, and disenchant and sell those materials, you can flip materials into enchanting scrolls and sell them for profit, you can hunt for higher rarity formulas and charge a premium crafting fee, and you can do certain enchanting flips like for example, the Serenite Shuffle, which is mainly a jewel crafting shuffle but also includes enchanting, and can make insane amounts of profit. So yeah, that is pretty much it for my enchanting and gold making guide for Ra. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Wrath content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon.